Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is in Buol. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at new things in Zim 9.2.0, or 9.2.1, we're actually on now. Although these were added in 9.2.0, it was a big change, so let's go take a look at the docs at, uh, on the Zim site, zimjs.com. Press the docs, and hit the updates right there. There's 9.2.1, a few small fixes, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. 9.2, we took a look at the pen in the last one. And uh, we'll save the labels on path for next. Oops, spoiler. Uh, here we're going to look at a couple new components, the toggle and the list. Uh, along with the list came improvements to buttons and tabs as well, and some breaks. All right, so uh, let's pop on over we'll see the list so here's the list cool huh really it's a window this is a, a zim window with the scroll bar from the window and then a bunch of tabs so one of the improvements we made to tabs is there's now vertical tabs to support this so that's a set of vertical tabs and along the bottom is the uh, horizontal tabs again in a, in a window and these are set up so that when I press section one there, oh, that didn't change. When I press section two, uh, back to section one, et cetera, these ones and vice versa. If I look there, section 23, that will scroll to section 23 in there. So you can set the selections on them and scroll to the, the positions. Uh, super duper, here we are closing it. And when it opens again, <laughs> close and open etc. All right, seem good. And there we are throwing the list as well or using the scroll bar. The scroll bar is optional. So is the title top optional, etc. Um, another new thing with that came in play with the list is that any display object can be put <clears throat> in this list and so we adjusted the tabs to be able to support any display object so here's inside a set of tabs with a bunch of weird things even tabs within tabs and as we press number nine it go well whichever index that, that's at I think there's only 12 of them and change this and it adjusts that as well now in this case if we press one i haven't uh, scrolled up automatically to one. We're still working on that when there's a different sizes of things in there. It's a bit trickier, so we didn't uh, support that. This is kind of um, a happy addition to be able to put any type thing in here. Uh, there's a horizontal version of the same with the horizontal scroll bar. Oh, that reminds me, uh, in the last one, because we didn't refresh, this was just sitting around here, we missed something. I had a feeling we were missing something. So let me refresh this. I refresh and watch that. We've added two parts in there and a whole bunch of things, and then we've removed them. I'll do that again. Refresh. There they are and then we've removed them. So uh, we were about to launch the list without that functionality, without the, fu the functionality being dynamic where we could add things to it or remove things from the list, aside from rebuilding the list. And we just thought, no, we can't do that. We can't launch it that way. So we spent another half day or so uh, making sure that that, um, that functionality was there. It wasn't particularly easy, but that does mean that it goes back through the tabs as well. So now you can add things to tabs and remove things from tabs dynamically. Okay. Uh, the other one, the other component is uh, much more simple. It's a toggle, so we can toggle this thing. Hump, hump. Now, um, it, it's all right. Uh, we're still kind of working on the functionality of it. It's, it's trickier. This one's quite easy. If I press it, it toggles. But you you don't want to be able to press and swipe towards the direction it's already done. You want to be able to press and swipe the other way. Let me just use my finger. So it's hard to do with a mouse. Uh, it's quite easy to do. Now I'm using a finger and I'm getting it every single time. So um, that's all right. Just sometimes it's hard to swipe with a mouse properly. <laughs> Here's my finger again. <laughs> Not that you can tell. <laughs> anyway, so there's the toggle. Uh, we may uh, adjust some of the uh, dynamics of that 
in the future. So you don't want to be able to press on this side and have it go, but you want to be able to press on this side and swipe to the other way. So it's actually, like I said, um, quite tricky to do that. There it is, though, toggle. So let's um, drop down into some code and take a look at uh, some of these things. Uh, this is the toggle, a new toggle. Uh, it can have two labels, a label and then a label left. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe it should have been label right or something like that. But anyway, whatever. Uh, I don't know if you guys out there really are going to use two labels or not. Uh, usually toggles, I think, are just one label, but not always. So here we go. Shadows and various colors, like always. Okay, so there's us testing some of those things. You can start toggled uh, true and uh, so forth. All right. So in the in the changes or in the updates, there's a link to this page, the toggle in the explore section. So you're welcome to press that. Here is the list code in Zim 9.2.0 or 9.2.1, obviously, it would work as well there. We're putting a bunch of words into a list, an array. It's called list. Then we're making list one and that will have the list that we just made, all those 30, 30 options or whatever in there. We got a title bar. I think the list now is the longest because it's a combination of both a window, which already had lots of parameters, and a tabs, which already had lots of parameters. The list now surpasses the button. The button used to be the longest uh, parameter sort of listing. <laughs> now, now list is unfortunately longer. So there's lots of things to put in there if you want. Uh, there's a, a boundary for as you drag around that thing. We are positioning it. Note that we now have a change. Uh, short, well, it's not a short changeable method. Uh, maybe he should have done that. A cha, that would have been kind of cool. So we have a tap, a T-A-P, and a cha, but we didn't do a cha. Uh, really, the short chainables were set for the traditional properties, tr traditional transform properties that CreateJS gives us. So X and Y, rotation, alpha, scale, those things. Those are all the short ones. Uh, tap just happens to be a three-letter thing anyway. But <laughs> regardless, do you care? <laughs> you don't care. <coughs> We've got to, do you care if I cough and die? Well, I'm sure you would. <laughs> How morbid. <laughs> Did I just watch a horror film? Probably. <laughs> oh, um, well, no, I just watched Bohemian Rhapsody. There was a death. I wouldn't really call it a horror film. Though. Anyway, dramatic. All right, so change. Uh, we have a change method. And to that change method, this is just like saying on round brackets, quote, change, call this function. Well, there it is. It's just dot change, call this function. And it's chainable. Cool, huh? And we're finding out what the text is there. <clears throat> and we're animating. Oh, we're, we're I'm showing you that we can find out what the text is. Do you want to see that? That was back on the list here. So if I press selection four and I F12 here, selection four shows up. If I go selection seven, selection seven shows up. So you can get the words that are on the, the list as well. Or you can use the e.target.selectedIndex to get the index of it. And then we're animating two, we're animating list two to that selected index. <coughs> Excuse me. There was a clone test of a list, and that worked out all right. And after a timeout, we're adding uh, list one dot add at. We're adding this array of things at starting at uh, element two. So add at index two, and then all the other ones will be pushed. If you're adding one thing, I think you can just add one thing, or you can add an array of things. And look at what we're adding. We're adding a new rectangle. And then we're adding some more text things. So remember, the list can receive now any display object. I mean, within reason. <laughs> Who knows? It may, may not see if you put in a, uh, a 2,000 radius circle or something into your list. Uh, <laughs> probably would work, but it might not be terribly handy for you. Uh, but anyway, you can put things like that. The, that would act as a divider. It can be interactive, etc. So that's neat. 
after a timeout, we remove those, or so remove at. Now just be careful, it's add at and remove at, not remove from, and not add to. Okay, uh, there's when we close it, we're, we're capturing a close event on that. We're setting a timeout and we're putting the list back on, so adding it back. Here's list two. It's pretty well the same thing, I suppose. <clears throat> and we're doing roughly the same thing where we're uh, doing a change on it and just turning list one, animating list one to the selected index of list two. Yay! Woot woot! Okay, does that seem all right? And the list objects one, uh, again, there's an example of what that is. You can take a look there. I, uh, it just has a whole bunch of things that we're adding weird things to the list. Oh, you can say as well how many items you want to show, and that can be in a decimal. So uh, what do you think there? There's various indents. This really took a lot of organizing uh, all the alignment. You can align in the left. You can align in the center. Shall we align this one in the... This is And, and it turned out that we needed also a label, a label align. So what is happening is... If you just throw in a bunch of strings, then really the align align is fine. Align will align your label as expected, because the list will go right out to the edges of, of the so-called window. So uh, we view this. You see how these things go right to the edge. If we align left, that means the text will align left. If you align right, the text will align right. But the problem with this one, let me refresh here is if we align left, then these objects will align left, and so will the text. And if you try and put an indent in there, then what are you indenting? Are you indenting these objects from the left, or are you indenting the text from the left? And you sometimes want those to be different values. So unfortunately, it meant that we had to um, add both uh, label indents and label aligns and list or just aligns and indents on the main list items. But let's see what these options look like when they're aligned to the left, for instance. I think this is the right one. Left align. And we refresh here. Oh, uh, that was the wrong one. So that's the second one. Maybe I better undo that while I'm still here. Where's the first one then? That looked like it was in the first one. List. This is, well, maybe this, oh, okay. Maybe this is the top one and it was on top. Yeah, that might make sense. Okay, so do you see any alignment? Align center, align left, like so. And we refresh here. And there they all go aligned to the left. Shall we try the label align to the right? No, uh, I don't think we had one. Label align colon quote right save and refresh here. Refresh. And there they are aligned to the right, which drops them a touch into the gutter. On these guys, that's a custom button, so you don't get the label align on the custom button. And then we want to put a spacing in there. Spacing. That would be label spacing colon 20 or whatever it may be. And we refresh here. And try it again and didn't work. So let's try that again. Label spacing. Did I spell that right? Let's go see if we've got a label spacing. Hopefully we do. And hopefully it's working. So in the Zim docs, we type in a list, like so. <laughs> nice, huh? And what have we got? Boom, 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 boom. Do you see any labels? Label indent vertical, label indent right there. Oh, indent. That's where we went wrong. As a matter of fact, if we looked, uh, it could help us if we looked in our F12 here bad argument label spacing in the function list here, bad argument label spacing. 
because it's not label spacing, it is label indent. Uh, spacing is another thing. Spacing is actually the uh, spacing between the tabs. It's not your indent. So it's the spacing between the, um, the list elements. Okay, so label indent 20, and we save that. Did I save it? And refresh. <laughs> Didn't save it. <laughs> hey, it's late at night. Is it late at night for you guys too? And there's there's the indent. Uh, it does look like it's taking in, not taking into account the gutter there, but that's all right. You can uh, manage that, <clears throat> I think, uh, without too much difficulty. It may be that this is... <clears throat> this has, excuse me, some spacing in there. Do you see it? Now, that spacing, and so what that's done is I think it's pushed the whole thing over. This uh, indent right here is probably, uh, do we have indent? It might be part of the spacing. Let's go with spacing of zero and see if it makes any difference. I think that's, no, that's between the two things, so that won't do it. But there's the zero spacing, so you can see that. However, that indent is the default indent. That's what it is. It takes on a default indent of 10 or something like that. Shall we see that in the docs? <laughs> or am I just making it up? You're going, hey, sure, you're just making that up. <laughs> so there's the indent default 10. Ooh, how about that? And I did this like a couple weeks ago, and I still remember. <laughs> So we would, if we wanted to get rid of that, normally that indent doesn't show up or it's not a problem. I mean, it, it's actually handy. If, if we were on a normal list like this, if we were on a list like that and we align these to the left, you actually want an indent of 10 or some, some sort of indent. Otherwise it bumps right against the left. So we've given you an indent of 10. Now what happens is when you have a list like this and you center it, you don't see the indent because everything is centered. But when you left align it, the indent goes against the left like that. So if we want to get rid of that, then <clears throat> it wouldn't be spacing zero, and then it was two. It would be indent colon, oops, indent colon uh, zero comma. And then we get rid of that little indent in there. And there she be gotten rid of. And there's a better 20 pixel uh, right hand um, uh, indent too on the label indent. Okay, got that. So wow, you know, it turned out to be <clears throat> more complicated than expected, <laughs> say the least. However, I think that uh, we've got that. All that stuff is styleable as well. So you can set styles and have multiple lists all take on the same kind of indents and stuff like that. You know, like my like my colors here along the border. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, huh? Pink, pink border. Bye bye. Alrighty, I think we'll stop it there. We goofed around a bit with the lists and the toggle, and as well, keep in mind that the tabs are like that. So, we did an example with the tabs. Do you want to see if we can find that? Let's see. Tabs, it probably would have been in here. Uh, tile outline, T A. T A B T A G tab backings. I don't think that was it. Which one is this? 9.2? Yeah, this is probably it. Open in browser. <laughs> no, that's the old one. <laughs> there was a. Uh, oh, crap. I guess we can't find it. Um, it's too bad. We made some custom tabs. What, what did they call that thing? And they were sticking out. They were vertical tabs. Ah, vertical tabs. Maybe something with a V. V, 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 vertical tabs, there they are. Open in browser, okay. So um, there's some vertical tabs and we probably purposely put in that little gutter. We could have bumped that right against the edge if we wanted to. Let's see that. Uh, then we've got various alignment and V alignment. And there's base, so this has a base on the right, which means we've gotten rid of all of the, um, I don't know what was it called? Flat bottoms. <laughs> Did you ever wonder about the flat bottoms? For tabs, we when tabs were normal across the top of something, the bottoms were flat and the tops had rounded bits. Got it? Sort of like these ones are rounded on the edge and flat here. But when we had tabs along the top, we would have flat bottoms. So we made buttons have a flat bottom. We made the rectangle even have a flat bottom. Then we introduced corners, um, we can now uh, use an array 
for corners to specify the four different corners. So it wasn't quite as important to have flat bottom anymore because we could manipulate that ourselves. And then when we introduced vertical tabs, now we can't use flat bottom because that doesn't make sense. So instead we've removed all occurrences of flat bottom everywhere and we can now use corners. And on the tabs, we've added a base parameter. The base parameter just quickly says if it's a base on the right, that'll go flat and these ones take the corner. If it's a base on the bottom, then um, the bottoms will go flat and the tops will be the corners. If it's a, a base on the left-hand side, then it will be the flip of this, that type of thing. So that's your base. All right, I think we were ending it, and then we didn't end it. <laughs> like I said, it was a pretty darn big uh, change. We're gonna come back uh, with another What's Bubbling at Zim and take a look at text on a path, or no, what's that called? Label, label on path, I think it is. Uh, all right, so we'll see that in another bubbling. In the meantime, uh, why don't you pop on into Zim, zimjs.com, and just put the slash slack and come and visit us slash slack, S-L-A-C-K. And that's our environment where we talk to people, you know, come on in. There's, there's not too many of us. There's enough to be fun and it'd be great to have some more. So if you're, certainly if you're using Zim, come on in, say hi. Uh, we're all friendly. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> uh, join us at Zim. Ciao.